Hi, I'm George. No, not that. There I am. I'm George. And that's a dog. And I'll be showing you how to do Photoshop t-shirt design. So we'll take this dog and make it look like that. And this can then be used on sites like Redbubble and TeePublic and Zazzle. And in this video, we'll be talking just about how to do the design part of this. If you want to learn more about how to actually sell on the internet through those different t-shirt sites, let me know in the comments and I can do more videos about that. Click on that like button, click on subscribe, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, the first thing we need to do to get to this point is to make a new file for our t-shirt design. So let's go up to File, come down to New, and in here, I'm going to be setting this at pixels. There we are. And the width right here is going to be 4,500, and the height is 5,400. Resolution is 300. Let's leave all these things at their defaults. So that will be just fine. Choose Create. And here's our basic t-shirt template. Now, if you're working for a white background primarily, you can leave this white. If you're going for a black background, you might want to have this as black, just as a reference. Won't be using that in the actual final image, but just for reference. I'm going to be doing both here, so let's just make a new layer right here. Grab my paint bucket and just fill that with black, which is my current foreground color. So now I have black and white as my choices. There we go. Let's now take our dog image, and I want to make a nice selection around our dog, and we'll then bring that selection over into that other file. So let's zoom in a little bit here. You can use any tool you want on this. I'm just going to be using the standard lasso tool right here, and I'll make a selection just outside, just a little ways out, not very far. And let's just work right around the dog picture. Now, if you get to a spot like this, you can hold the space bar down and then move your image and then complete right around the dog. Now, when you do that space bar, hold down the image kind of trick, make sure you keep the button down on your mouse. Otherwise, you're going to lose your selection. I'll just speed up the video right here and get through this one step pretty fast. But on these selection steps, make sure you take your time and do a good job. This is the most important step really on the whole process is doing a good selection. Okay, there we go. So here's the basic selection. Let's now go up to select and come down to select a mask right here. And I like using the red overlay most of the time. So that's what mine is set at. Down through here, we can put this at smart radius. I'm going to give it just a one pixel smart radius. That sometimes helps a little bit. I'll leave everything else at the defaults right now. You can see there's my brush size. That's pretty good. And I'm using the refined edge brush. And then put that plus sign just outside of your subject. And then brush along the edge and let go and let Photoshop think about that. And it's going to go back in and clean up that edge. Now, sometimes it's not going to work out very well. Like right in here, that's not too good. It's good up in here. So this will take more cleaning. Again, the more separation there is between the background and the foreground, the better job this does. If it's real close, it's going to be kind of hit and miss. But that's all right. We're only doing a t-shirt. And again, I'll speed up the video at this point And we'll get past this one step. This one's not as critical as the previous selection step, so you can do this one pretty fast in here. Go right back to the beginning. There's our basic selection. It's kind of bad over here. I already see that. We can clean some of that up right now. Let's come down to the next tool right down here. And this is just the brush tool. We can add to or subtract from our selection. Right now it's on the plus sign, so if I do this, it adds that in. If I change this over here to the minus, it then subtracts that out. And I'll use this to come in, not right up against the dog, but just close and get rid of some of this stuff out here. We can do it at the layer mask as well, but I might as well do it when I'm right here. And we're back into fast motion here. And I'll just do a quick cleanup right around the edge. We'll come back and do more cleanup using the layer mask once we get this part of this process done in here. Let's take this go over here, right hand side, and I'll scroll to the very bottom where it says output 2. Let's alpha to new layer with layer mask right there. Choose that one. Click OK. And there's our basic layer with layer mask. Now let's just float this window and then grab the move tool. And I'll just take this layer. I'm going to grab the layer and drag it over here onto our working file. And there we go. I'm just going to minimize that. We don't need that any longer. We're done with that. Notice it brings a layer mask in as well. And now we can position the dog and resize this. If you pull on one of the corners or the side, it's going to resize that proportionally. 
and I'll leave some space above and below for our text. We can always readjust this later. So that's pretty good right there. Let's now do some cleanup on this. Hit the check mark and we'll go back to the zoom tool here and let's check our edges. I can see some stuff up in here and around here. We can clean that up over on the layer mask side. Click on your layer mask side. Black hides white show. So I'm going to change my brush here. There's black. Now for this, I want this to be just a little bit soft. I'll put it about halfway down. There we go. And then let's just come in and do some cleanup right along that edge. Just, just kind of tap in. Now the soft brush there keeps it from looking real hard edged as we're doing this. And I'm back into fast motion again here. Now in this one step, take your time on this one. It's a bit more critical. This is going to be the final edge for most of the dog. We'll be doing some fixing in a couple of spots just a little later on right down here. But take your time, go through and do a nice clean job on this. You can come back and change your tool and add in if you need to. We'll see more of that in just a bit down by the feet. But just work around the whole figure in here and clean this up as best you can. Now at this point, it's a little hard to come in here with the brush. So I'm going to leave the toes just for a second. Let's get everything up in here first. And then we'll make a careful selection around those toes and use that selection to make a better mask on this. Okay, real fast here, just cleaning up these few areas right around the feet. We'll then fix the feet with a better selection. Okay, let's zoom in just a little bit more. I think that's probably enough. Now I'm missing a toe right here. So let's go back to our brush tool, change over to white, and let's just bring that back in so I can see it. That looks good. Use any selection tool you want on this one. I'll just use the lasso again, and I'll make a more careful lasso right around the toes and the feet right in here. And try to do just a cleaner job of this. There we go. And right around here. And then clear around that stuff down there. And this gives us a mask to paint in. Back to our black brush. And then very easy to just come along that edge. There we go. And do a nice clean set. So if it's a bit too detailed, using a quick selection mask helps. Control D to deselect that. I think that foot's all right. And this side, I think I'll leave that one up there. That's okay. And I can freehand this right along here. That's fine. And then same trick, I think, for those toes. Back to our lasso tool. Let's make a careful lasso right around the toes in here. And the balls of the toes right there. Something like that. Back to our paintbrush. And brush in there and get a nice, clean edge. Okay. Control D to deselect us, finish up the rest of the cleanup here, back in fast motion again, and just work around the whole outside right along that edge. You can see it right there. It needs a lot of cleanup in there. And we'll go clear up and around and then right back to our starting point at the top. Okay, there we go. Let's now go back to our zoom tool and fit on screen. See that line right here? I think that's just that edge. I'm going to go down here to layer one. Okay, I'm still seeing that edge right down here, that line. So we're on our layer mask still, back to our black brush the brush size up a lot and that's the right square bracket and let's just paint along that edge and get that out of there okay now we may have missed some things that are just not showing up let me show you how you can fix that very easily go over here to the image side of the dog layer and then go up to layer come down to layer style and stroke and i'll change this to white just click in here and drag upper left hand corner there we go. And make it a good size. This one is 65. And there's all these kind of bumpy things out here. These are all things that we just missed on that cleanup. So I have to go back in and catch all of that. And you'll see how this works. Let's go over to the layer mask side again. And I'll start up here. And I'll zoom in. You can see how there's like circles in here. Those are dots that are outside of our dog. So back to the brush tool. Bring my size down about the same size as the dot. And then click in the middle of that. There we go. And that cleans out anything that was right in that area. If you see this, just come in a little bit more and you can then clean that out. You want to have this being pretty close to the edge of the dog. You can even just brush along the edge like that. Okay, let's finish this one step up. I'll go clear around the whole dog and do this. Now, if we were making this as a sticker, you would be seeing that. The sticker is going to be giving it a white border and it's going to be giving it a white border based upon what's in the image. And it would catch all those things and you would see that stuff. So you really need to come here and do this job to get it as clean as possible. Okay, so we'll finish up on this cleanup step. Now, it's not going to be perfectly smooth over there because we have little tufts of hair and things showing. But get all this stuff that's really sticking out. You want to have a fairly consistent border left around the dog image in here. And then take a clear back around and back to the starting point. 
and that's now nicely clean. Let's go ahead and the screen, and that looks good. We can now just get rid of that effect, come down to the effect line right here, and you can right click and clear layer style and get that out of there. Okay, dog is all finished. If you want to, you can at this point come in, do a bit of contrast work on that. I think I'll do that. Go to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Where it says use previous layer, just check that, choose okay, and that's just the dog layer. And then up here in the properties, I'm gonna take the black side and pull the black side in just a little bit, bit more contrast on that. And I think that's all I really need on that one, just a bit darker on my blacks. And that looks really good. Okay, now we're ready for some type. So for that, let's switch over here to our type tool. There we go. And let's set the type color here to white. Again, click inside and then drag up our left-hand corner. Gives you pure white. Then you want a kind of a fancy, fun, fairly thick typeface. All these are good options in here. I have quite a few of these. I got these from the site dafont.com, D-A-Font.com. And I'll use this top one right here, kind of a fun typeface. And it's set at center, so I can click in the middle here someplace right here. Let's just put in our first bit of type. And that's here's what. Now I have this set at a real large type size and it doesn't really fit as you can see, but that's okay. We're gonna be bending this and adjusting the size as we need to. So back to the type tool, click in the middle someplace and then across the top of here, click on this icon right there. And this is the warp text. This is the fastest way to get yourself curved text. If you wanna to go to the trouble, you can put a circle path in here and attach your text to the circle path and all that kind of nonsense. Not really that needed here for a t-shirt design. So we'll do this the fast way and that's arc right here and we can then adjust that arc size choose okay and we'll pull that down now it's a bit of space up here i'm going to change that grab the type tool let's select that and then our properties here click where the letter is va and then just back up on that a little bit and that pulls that space in there we go that's better now size is a bit too large so i'll grab the upper left hand corner and i'll drag this in notice how it jumps over to a different shape box that's fine it always does that drag your corner in and let's reposition this and get the size where we want it. And I'll pull the side in a little bit. Now I wanted a bit more of a curve. So for that, I'll hold the shift key down and pull this in. We can then change that without proportion. And that's pretty good right about like that. There's our top line. Let's go back to the type tool. Click in the middle bottom someplace. And on this, our spacing is all wrong. So let's go over here and I'll change this back to zero. There we go. That works. Let's make sure this is all at zero. Okay, and then for the space right here, maybe bring that back just a little bit. That's good. And same thing, click into your text and then up to this warp tool and we'll change this to the arch. And this time just reverse that other side and we'll arch at the bottom. There we go. And back to our move tool. And we'll position that someplace kind of like that. And again, if you hold the shift key down, you can adjust this non-proportionally. If you don't hold the shift key, then it's gonna adjust proportionally, but I think that looks pretty good right in here. Hit that check mark, and there we go. To get rid of that bounding box, just click on your background layer. Now, a couple things in here. This is good for the black background. If I hide that black background, obviously the text doesn't show on the white background. So you have a couple of choices in here. You can either make your text a color if you want to for on white, that's one way to go with this, or you can put an outline around this. Let me show you one thing about making this a color. And that's that we're working in RGB mode. We can double check that up here. We had that set as one of our defaults when we made our file. And that's image mode. We're in RGB right here. Now the different t-shirt sites want RGB files. You want RGB PNG files but they're gonna be printing using four color separation. So they're actually gonna be printing in CMYK mode, but they want the images in RGB mode. And that can cause us some problems on bright colors. And I'll grab a shape, it's just an ellipse. I'll just put a big dot right over here. And let's fill this ellipse, there we go. Now if I select that color, here's our color picker. Notice up here, I get this icon right there with a little warning triangle and a different color. If you click on this, this is the CMYK color. Click on that. Now this is a CMYK correct color. Obviously it's not what we want. What we need in here is something a lot closer to the upper right hand corner. That's not going to work for us. But if you click on that, you can then kind of edge closer, just little steps like this. And so they move towards that corner until that warning comes back again. There it is. Click back out and we can get a lot closer this way. We can never get to the actual corner we can get pretty close, that's going to be a good CMYK color. Now to copy this over to that, I'm just going to select the hexadecimal code, right click and copy, choose okay. And then here's our shape. Let's go up here to the shape fill color right there and click on the color picker for that shape, right click and paste. And if now I adjusted that or modified that to a 
CMYK safe color for use in our RGB file. Keep that in mind if you're working with bright colors Double check those to make sure they will work with CMYK and adjust as needed. Okay, so that's taken care of. So we have this on our white background right there. It doesn't work. So what I'll be doing is putting a border around that. I'll go to the here's what type first. Click on that layer. Go up to layer. Come down to layer style and stroke. Change the stroke color here to a black. Pull down to the left hand corner. There we go. And here's a black outline. Same thing on the I think right here. Now for this, it's the exact same stroke. So I'm just going to come down here, right click on the name, copy layer style, right click on the name of your other text and paste layer style. And there we go. There's the dog on a white background. So we're now set. We can see how this looks on a black background. Also looks good on a white background. Last thing we need to do is to remove our backgrounds. We want to have that transparent. And there we go. There's our t-shirt design. Final step, of course, is to save this out. And it's just saving it out as a PNG 24. And that gives you your transparency. And that's up here, File, come down to Export. And you probably have this set at Quick Export as PNG. That's the default. If you have it as something else, just click on Export As. And then choose your PNG format right up here. And make sure that transparency is selected. And then export that out. Now, again, if you want to learn more about how to actually put these up on those different sales sites and get sales happening, those kind of things, so there's a lot of stuff involved in that. If you want to learn about that, let me know in the comments, and I can do a series of those videos also. Don't forget to hit like and share and subscribe, and check out my complete training course for Photoshop. The link for that is right down there in the description, and I'll see you next time.